Good morning, everybody, and thank you once again for joining us here at Sierra Tucson with our webinar series. Today, we're just going to go back to the basics. It's going to be a very simple presentation, and we're just going to go um, just to have a little refreshment about our some, some things that we get for granted most of the time. Um, so let's, with a couple things that I want to mention, guys. Um, it's very, very important to be aware of who we are. It's kind of going back to the basics and getting to know our strengths and weaknesses. But most important than the strengths, the weaknesses, because those are the things that bring us down. Those are the things that can break us in any given moment. Uh, with that being said, guys, I'm a very well aware of my own um, weaknesses, and that's kind of my accent. So please, if you don't understand something, it's very clear that let us know and I will explain myself. Let's just start defining what a crisis is. So crisis, it's a time of intense difficulties. It's travel or danger. Crisis is supported by inertia. Inertia is the tendency of not doing anything or remain unchanged. Crisis also drives poor coping skills. Becoming upset emotionally quickly over even trivial things. Highly reactive and sensitive. Easily embarrassed, offended, and intimidated. Crisis also drives you to have a quick responses to emotional feelings, either anger, sadness, have difficulties getting praise, or being breaking down, having criticisms, blaming others, and also displays repetitive behaviors. It's also very important to define the difference between compassion and empathy. Empathy is a foundation of your human connection. It's unconscious and also is our own wired. Having a genuine compassion for others start with having compassion for ourselves. Letting go obsessive thoughts. Stop criticizing yourself. Refrain setbacks as a learning experiences. That's very, very important. Compassion is deliberate, is unified, is active, and also regenerates. Compassion is different than empathy, but compassion originates in cognitive centers in your brain. It can turn actions in intentional solutions and is actually solution oriented. One of the biggest difference with empathy is impulsive. You don't think about, you feel empathy for people that is in your own network, in your, in your clan, in your tribe. Compa empathy, I'm sorry, can be a little divisive because as I mentioned before, it's also exclusive for people that you know. Com empathy can be a little draining. You get tired of having the same feeling and the same compassion over and over again, which re compassion is regenerative. It gives you that sense of doing a great things. As Brené Brown says, talk to yourself like you would to somebody that you love. That's really important, guys. Having the self-talk, the self-talk with love, compassion, and uplifting. Learning new information and being exposed to different experiences can produce alteration in gene expressions that promotes changes in the new neuro neuronal synapses. Synapse is the connection between neurons in your, in your brain. Neurons are the cells that connect 
many activities in your brain. Those are the main cells in your brain, actually. Today, it's very important to know a new term, and it's called metacognition. Metacognition is referred as the unique capacity that humans have to self-reflect about your think and also have questions, questioning your own thinking and your own actions. We tend, guys, to be our worst critics. So today I'm going to invite you to see our life as a quilt. It's really important to identify that we are made out of different colors, different fabrics, different sizes, and it doesn't mean that we're going to single out one. We're going to see our life as a group of qualities. So even though maybe there is pieces of fabric that we don't like or they can of itching a little bit, we're just going to go ahead and accept who we are as a whole because, as I mentioned before, nothing more comfortable than a quilt in a January afternoon watching TV and cuddling with this beautiful blanket. So, again, I'm going to invite you just to go ahead and no single out every particular characteristic, but accept for who we are. We cannot change our genes, but we can change the information that we transmit. That happens if something comes out of today's lecture. We need to be clear in one thing. The brain heals. The brain heals through something that we call neuroplasticity. That enables individual interactions with the environment, and that alters the development and functioning. That happens through something that we call arborization and pruning. Arborization is the regrow of connections in your brain that increases your ability and the capacities for brain functioning. It's also really important to realize that in life, one of the big, biggest characteristics of human beings is resilience. Resilience is the capacity to deal with, to overcome difficult situations, to learn from them, and even have a gain from our adversities in life. We need to realize that every morning it's a new opportunity. Resilience implies something good emerging from adversity. It's a dynamic process. And the first from adapting. Adapting is accepting something that you cannot change. Resilience implies movement, implies action. With that being said, it's really important, guys, that we realize how, how we're going to plan for future events. It's really important to have plan, plan A, and sometimes plan B or plan C. We need to be mindful. What triggers us? And in terms of triggers, we have, have a list of places, people, Many different situations that I'm not going to be exposed to. As we know, the mesolimbic system in our brain is prone to have that repetitive behavior. In terms of the triggers, it's really important to have at least to have a list of future plans, to have a plan to change the plan. Also, make alternative um, objectives. If this is not working, what's going to be the plan B? What's going to be the plan C? That's really important, guys, for us to know, put all the eggs in one basket. It's also important to be aware 
who is around us, who is our support system. Use the support system. We are social creatures. We have a couple of neuropeptides in our brain called oxytocin and vasopressin. Those are the hormones that makes a difference between vertebrates and invertebrates. That's the neuropeptides that allows a penguin to recognize their offspring out of the thousands. That's a very important quality that it's natural in humans also and also in all mammals. It's a neuropeptide that allows that bonding between mother and baby, between father and baby. It reaches the it peaks during gestation, but also in males is reaches the peak when you have that connection with your offspring. Also, it's important to have actions. We need to plan in advance things that can bring me down, okay? How is gonna be my emotional response to many different situations? We need to visualize ourselves the same way that we practice when we're gonna do a job interview. It's very important that we need to visualize, okay? Plan how is gonna be my response with my new self? How is gonna be that response through many different situations that I'm gonna be exposed? And also it's important to rehearse, okay? Having those conversations, having reaching, if I'm gonna be, let's assume that I have an addiction problem. So I need to be aware which people I cannot call, which people I'm gonna be away from. Again, we need to practice even a, a power posturing. There is a very interesting TED talk done by Amy Cuddy. And she talks about the science behind power posturing. We know that increases your testosterone and decreases your cortisol in a very significant levels. How are we gonna do this, guys? So we're gonna go, and first we need to be kind. Kindness is something that needs to be practiced, okay? And let's start with something very simple. If you don't have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. Let's filter what things, what message we're transmitting to that person. And let's filter it through two different doors. The first one, how I feel if I say this, and how that person is going to receive that information that I'm saying. Let's be a change agent for uplift people and situations, okay? Do your best not to hurt people, physically, but very, very important, mentally. We assume through our own biases that people can carry uh, or have the strength to deal with communications that we get used to. And sometimes we don't realize that that person has previous experiences and we are re-traumatizing that person with those comments. Simple things, guys, that we can practice every day. Saying hello, good morning, but saying good morning from the bottom of our heart, wishing those, those wishes, actually. Um, these situations can enlighten, okay, and make people comfortable. It's very important to make people being seen, okay? And also, it's gonna make us feel better and it's gonna make that person feel better. We already know that by chemical reaction, we don't have to like everybody, but it's really important to be cordial, okay? I'm gonna steal a, a phrase from May Angelo, and we know that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. Please keep, on, keep this in mind. Just remember when you close your eyes and think in somebody that makes you feel good. Just remember that kindergarten professor, how you felt when she said good morning every day. Presence, this is it. This is all that we have in reality. Being present is a 
one of the best ways of mindfulness, okay? We start making plans for the future and we forget that today is the day. So let's be a change agent. Let's plant that little seed today, expecting that one day, even if it's not for us, somebody else is going to enjoy those fruits. Let's begin, guys, thinking that this is the time that I have to change my response to situations, but also how people can see me. Being present means giving attention to the moment, drifting around somewhere else's spaces. So we start sometimes to spend hours and minutes thinking about the future, and we don't realize that this is it. This is a very beautiful article actually called 910, and it was in the New York Times, about a wife talking um, on her about the last night that she had got to spend with her husband the night before of 9-11. 9-11. So that changed her mind. Um, we realize actually, guys, that now has to be the main concentration of our life. So let's apply that. It seems very elementary, but life is what's happening right now. If you still think in the before, before is the past and the future have not yet happened. So please, mindfulness, being kind, and be present. But also, having a little changes in being healthy. Being healthy doesn't mean to change your lifestyle completely. We know that only having 20 minutes of physical activity three times a week can, is the same as having 40 milligrams of SS arrives. So we know the importance of physical activity just to continue producing that serotonin and that norepinephrine and decreasing cortisol. It regulates the HPA axis, okay, the hypothalamus pituitary axis, and allows us to be more calm, allows us to increase the neuroplasticity as well. We also know that negative ions makes boost oxygen that flows to the brain. And that's really important, guys, to, for that brain nourishment. Starting at daily habits, okay? Having um, healthy choices. So I'm also gonna have a, a little study that we know that if, let's assume that you smoke 10 cigarettes a day. If you cut those cigarettes for two a day, so instead of smoking 10 cigarettes, you're going to smoke eight, you expanded your lifespan up to five years. So we don't have to change those big changes at once because that is a little tiring. It gets exhausting just thinking the huge changes. Let's assume that you drink a liter of soda a day. Having just half a liter of soda, you're decreasing those chances of get diabetes type two up to 40%, okay? Just having that little tweaks can develop in a big changes as well. As I mentioned before, as we know the 30 minutes increase also your immune system, increases the production of T cells and it helps to reduce the risks of having many um, diseases. Being emotionally healthy is, is easier to obtain when you follow those steps, when you create and you realize that I'm not walking to enjoy the destiny, but I'm walking to enjoy every single day, every single step. Let's be mindful and present and observe around and let's enjoy the journey without thinking about the end. And gratitude, okay? It's very usual that after being exposed to an adverse experience, we ruminate in those moments, we continue spinning, okay? So let's be able, guys, in some point to go and rescue your own self and Let's be grateful for having that chance as humans 
to rescue ourselves, to go and be our best friends. It's okay. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to have those moments of crisis and even have a little bit of enjoyment in those moments. Okay? Let's keep in mind that we always are one decision away from having a different life. It creates, guys, up to 30 days, okay, to start having the habit, and up to 90 days to continue um, creating those habits and follow through. The reason why, because we know that every 90 to 120 days, we regenerate every single cell in our body. So it's really important to apply those concepts. So again, it's really important to be mindful and aware of our weaknesses. It's very important to identify our triggers, to see, and I'm gonna give an example of that. Let's assume that every time that I call my mom, I get extremely triggered, okay? So I start calling her every day. I'm going to set up boundaries and I'm gonna call her every other day or every other week or every other month. Depends on the level of triggering that that situation causes. Also, mindfulness, presence, kindness, and be aware that life is what you change every single day. Be mindful, that be open-minded, that your brain won't fly away. So I'm going to invite you to have a little bit open-minded. Find the opportunities, even in moments of crisis. This applies resilience. Remember, resilience is the ability to be great, to change things and absorb the best out of those moments. Uh, with that being said, guys, I'm sorry. With that being said, thank you very much. If you have any questions at this moment, I will more than happy to answer them. So one of the questions that I'm going to take is how you can work on letting go of bad thoughts. The, the most basic thing is let's, let's identify what's the trigger, okay? And Sometimes I'm going to take a code from the body keeps the score. Sometimes we go and we act like firefighters. We have a little fire in our kitchen and we call 911. They come and then destroy the whole apartment. They float the whole apartment with, and they destroy the whole beauty actually to extinguish that little thing. So let's be clear that we need to first to step back from that moment and realize what's happening, what's really causing. It's my own projection, or this is really a cause, something that, to get triggered. So in that moment, we're just gonna be able to isolate the situation and question, how is my reaction? What I'm reacting this way? Is something that I learned before, or it's something that I, I'm just going, responding from the trauma component? Um, and clarify, sometimes when we are preconditioned to that response, to that agitation, it takes control and we and clouds our capacity to respond to situations. So that's one of the things. First is recognize what's causing, what's causing that bad programming in my thoughts. And let's start applying those, that application. Again, the name, I hope that answered your question. And um, again, the lady from the talk is called Amy Cuddy, C-U-D-D-Y. One of the other questions is, what are some steps to help an alert mindfulness? First, having that ability to have the self inventory to realize what's what I'm made of what's my capacity what's my capacity of react to situations and what tools I have in my toolbox to apply so first it's really important to breathe breathing is the basic of mindfulness because as I mentioned before it increases that oxygen level so breathing Having a walk, exercise, presence, and also being aware that sometimes 
no being okay is also okay. Can we prevent inertia? Yes, we can. Um, we can also kind of um, have that, that self-confidence and self-awareness uh, that just today I'm going to plan my day. So having those signs and having those plans, like today I'm going to walk 20 minutes. We have a multiple resources. Have your alarm in your, in your, on your cell phone and said today you're going to work for 20 minutes and get a little bit of commitment to that. that. Having that commitment that I'm working today for 20 minutes just to increase, to help, basically to help my own self to move on out of situations that can be very adverse. Um, also, we reaching out to your support system making yourself accountable to people, inviting people to support you through those moments and say, hey, let's, let's go for a walk today, even though if I'm not feeling like going, please push me a little bit and let's go and do it. Okay, um, I have a question here um, about abandonment, okay, and how to combine perfect in times of isolation. Guys, um, we need to be mindful also of that even when you consider having yourself as a unique, when you consider having that self-compassion, um, that have, ha, we have the resources these days to reach out to people, reach out to people that we, um, we consider our support system. So it's, it's, we, we also have to increase that adaptability and that flexibility, knowing that in these days, our interaction is changing rapidly. So we need to be able to have those, those moments of moving on and reaching out to people and using our technology these days. Even though it's not the same, it's better to have a conversations two or three times with somebody than completely being isolated. So use your technology, use the people that you love. And that's pretty much what, what I'm going to say. Mm, with that being said, guys, I know we're going to have a busy days ahead. Once again, I really want to thank you, everybody, for joining us in our series. Um, thanks for your questions. You have a wonderful day, and it's been a pleasure.